Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver here on a 2016 Land Rover Discovery Sport. So this is what our trailer hitch looks like installed on our vehicle here. Now fortunately most of it is actually hidden behind the bumper here so it definitely does have a hidden installation. The only thing we can actually see is the receiver tube which has a nice black matter black powder coated finish that's going to help it blend in well with the vehicle. So adding a trailer hitch to your Discovery Sport is going to be a great option because it's going to make your vehicle that much more versatile. Now we can obviously use the trailer hitch for towing but if we wanted to hit some trails or free up some space inside the vehicle for those long road trips we could easily attach either a hitch mounted bike rack or a hitch mounted cargo carrier. So if we are going to be towing we want to keep in mind that our trailer hitch here has a 4,500 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's the amount we can pull outward on the receiver tube. And it also has a 675 pound tongue weight rating. That's gonna be the downward force on the receiver tube. Now keep in mind, these capacities are for the hitch only because the hitch and vehicle are tested separately. Therefore, we wanna verify the towing capacity of our vehicle in the owner's manual, and then go by the lower of the two rated components, whether that's the hitch or vehicle. So you'll be happy to know that because we have the larger two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, you're gonna have a much greater variety of hitch mounted bike racks and hitch mounted cargo carriers to choose from. So if we take a closer look at the receiver tube, on the side here, we're gonna have a standard 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin hole. That's gonna work with your standard 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin and clip. Keep in mind, this is gonna be sold separately. Most bike racks and cargo carriers, however, will come with their own. And then welded to the bottom of the receiver tube, these are where our safety chains are gonna go. These are gonna work great with both the larger clevis style hooks, as well as the smaller S-type. So now we got a couple measurements for you guys here that are gonna help you when you're selecting your hitch mounted accessories. The first one is the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening. It's gonna be right at 19 inches, and that measurement there will be useful when you're selecting a ball mount. That way you can make sure you get the correct rise and drop to tow your trailer level. And then we have the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of the bumper. Now this one is pretty close. It's only recessed about a half inch or so, so there should be no issue at all with any folding accessories contacting the vehicle. So in regards to installation, this one really isn't bad at all. There's really only minimal modifications required to the vehicle in order to get the hitch on. But once we remove a few panels, it just simply bolts into place. We can walk you through this entire process step by step now. So the first step of our installation, we need to support our exhaust because we will be lowering this for clearance to install our trailer hitch. So if you guys are working on the ground, you could take a couple blocks of wood or a jack stand, place it anywhere on the exhaust to help support it, and we break the hangers free. We're in the air here, so we're gonna be using a support strap. We're just gonna simply find two points on the frame here, hook those two, and then I can pull our strap tight for now. So once we have that in place, what we're gonna to need to do, we have one of these on either side. So we're gonna show you the passenger side over here. So if we locate our muffler and the tailpipe, directly above that, you're gonna see we have a series of hangers. Now it is kind of hard to see up in there, but if we follow that top hanger, it should be attached to a bracket which sort of clips on the frame. And on the outside of that bracket, we're gonna have a 10 millimeter bolt we need to remove and then we'll actually have to lift up and release the clip there on the frame. We can give you a little bit closer view of that now. So here's what that bracket looks like. If you find the orange rubber isolator, the top hanger going to that, that's gonna be attached to the bracket. So our bolt here is gonna be over on this side, sort of between this fender liner and the outside of the frame. We're gonna take a 10 millimeter socket and we're gonna remove that bolt. Once we get that bolt removed, we can take the bracket, we're gonna lift up and out, and then it should pivot down just like so. We need to do that exact same thing on the other side. So now that we have the two rear hangers broken free, we need to work our way back to about the center of the vehicle here, just directly behind this resignator here. So we have a never rubber isolator. We need to remove the hanger from this. This is the rearwardmost hanger besides the two attached to the muffler. So this is the final one we need to remove. 
I'm gonna take a spray lubricant, I'm gonna spray it inside there to make things a little bit easier to remove. Then we can either take a pry bar or an actual exhaust hanger removal tool to free the isolator from the hanger. So now we're gonna come outside the vehicle here. We're gonna locate this gray panel at the rear. And on either side here, you have one bolt. We'll remove this with a 10 millimeter socket. And then we have some clips up top. We'll just pull that panel straight out once we get both of the bolts removed. So once we have that center panel removed, we have this underbody panel here we need to remove as well. Now there's a few different kinds of fasteners holding this to the vehicle. We have both bolts, some of these on the outside. There's two on the outside here, two on the outside of each fender well. And then we have some nuts underneath. You can see what those look like here. So we have a couple on the bottom of this panel and then there's one on the top on each side there. So let's go ahead and get these all out so we can remove this panel. We're gonna be using a 10 millimeter socket to remove all these fasteners. So now with all of our fasteners removed, we should be able to pull our panel down and maneuver it out from the vehicle. So now we're gonna come over to the passenger side frame rail. Here's what it looks like. Now you may or may not have a couple bolts already in the frame there in those locations. If you do, you need to go ahead and remove them. But if you don't like us, we can proceed to the next step. And just an FYI, if you do have those two hex bolts present, you'll need an 18 millimeter socket to remove them. So now we're ready to raise our hitch into position. Before we do so, we're gonna go ahead and prep our hardware. So what we're gonna be doing is grabbing our hex bolt here, placing a split lock washer over that, followed up by a flat washer. We're gonna assemble three of these bolts per side. So now with an extra set of hands, we can go ahead and lift our hitch up into position and secure it to the frame using the provided hardware. Now that we have all of our hardware in place, we can go ahead and tighten and torque it to the specifications and in our instructions using a 22 millimeter socket. So our next step is to do some trimming. We have to trim both the lower shield here as well as the knockout panel, that silver panel they removed earlier. So the best way to get this done correctly is to refer to the instructions because they have some great diagrams you can follow. On this bottom panel here, we're essentially gonna be cutting inside these two little tabs like so. And then on that center knockout panel, we're simply gonna be cutting out a rectangle for our hitch receiver tube. So again, make sure you refer to the diagrams and your instructions so you can get the correct cutouts made. But once we have both of our pieces cut, we can reinstall them on the vehicle. Now, once we have all of our panels installed, don't forget to raise your exhaust back up into position. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver here on our 2016 Land Rover Discovery Sport.